I'm back, y'all. Hello, friends and neighbors. Welcome back to the Brownstone. My name is Rick Brown. I hope you're doing very well. I want to thank you for your patience. Uh, it's been a long time since I've uh, uploaded a video. And the reason for that is simply one word, COVID. I don't want to get into it. I'll just say that it sucks. Uh, OK, so before I left you, um, the last thing that we talked about was this cool idea of taking a rhythmic pattern um, that consists of four 16th notes on either side of beat two, right? Uh, if you don't remember that video, I will link it up there. Bang. We had two rhythmic patterns of four 16th notes on either, either side of beat two. So that's one E and a on one side of beat two, and then right on the other side of beat two, we had E and a three. Two E and a three, right? So we talked a lot about those two groupings, those two four note groupings individually. So for this lesson, what I want to do is I want to put them together and combine them to create some cool sort of rhythmic phrases. Now what I want you to do is write these two groups down. Write down one eanda on one side of beat two, and then on the other side of beat two, I want you to write down e and a three. Because this exercise is going to involve taking different combinations of those two four note groupings to create some cool lines, and even get into a bit of improvising. So let's take a look at those two four note groupings. Very simple. I've got Anna one here set to 90 BPM, because that's a vibe. Uh, and beats one and three are turned off as usual. So check it out. So there's our groove. You're hearing beats two and four. So now we're going to isolate these two rhythms on either side of beat two. First one being one E and up. Simple. Very simple. One E and up. Three, four. One E and up. And again, I'm swinging that 16th note. Three, four. One E and up. Three, four. One E and up. So that's our first group. Second group is the four sixteenth notes right after beat two, which is E and a three, which goes like this. One, two, three, four. One, E and a three. One, E and a three. E and a three. E and a three. Right? So those are our two, those are our two groups. So then what do we do? Well, isn't it obvious? Take it to the bass. Sounds like this. Two, three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Now I'll play the other grouping. One, two. One. 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 Now check this out. I'm going to put them together. And when I do that, I get a very cool rhythm that sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Very cool. And those are the two groups that we're going to work with. So the reason why I want you to write these two groups down is I want you to be able to see these four note groupings, because what we're going to do now is take different combinations. There are going to be a great many combinations of notes that you can play. I'm just going to go through like one or two of them, and then I'm going to leave you to the rest. Huh? Otherwise, this video will be like three days long. Nobody wants that. So for this next part of the exercise, now that you have these notes written down, here's what I want you to do. I'm just going to give you a couple of examples, and then the rest will be up to you to find your own rhythms, the ones that really speak to you and make you go, oh man, that is grooving. OK, so here's the first one. Let's say we play the first and last note of the first grouping, the four note grouping that starts on beat one. Uh, and since we're playing the first and last note and skipping the two in the middle, how about we play the two in the middle on the second grouping, the E and a three. So that rhythm will give us one E and a two, E and a three. One E and a two, E and a three. Right? So now here's what we can do. We can turn the metronome on and just count that out, feel it, get it into the body, 
and then take it to the base. Here's what that sounds like. One, two, three, four. There's our groove. 90 BPM beats one and three are turned off. So you just get the backbeat. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Now that we've got that, I want to understand the rhythm that we've now established for ourselves for the next part of this exercise. So that is the first two notes, oh, sorry, that's the first and last note of the first grouping and the middle two notes of the second grouping, which sounds, let's just count it out, three, four. One E and up, right? One E and up, so that's the first one. One E and up. And then the second group, E and a three. One E and up, and a three. One E and up, and a three. Bump, 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 bump. Bump, 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 bump. Bump, 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 bump. And then that's the groove. Okay, so once we've established that, then what we can do is move it around our scale of choice. Now, you know me, I'm always choosing the G minor pentatonic scale because it's so simple and everyone can play it. But you can choose whatever scale you want. And then apply these notes of the scale to that rhythm in any way that you want. You can totally improvise or you can just come up with a pattern. How about I come up with a pattern and then we'll go from there. So let's say it's like, there's the groove. And then I'll move it around G minor pentatonic. So cool. But then once I've established that, then I can have a little bit more freedom to play around with that rhythm a little bit and maybe fill in the blanks or maybe leave some notes out, fill in a different way. Let's play around with that. Three, four. So you can see how using these very simple steps to uh, combine different rhythms using these two four note groupings can have you playing some really super grooving lines in that much time, right? It's such a hip exercise and that's just one example. So again, because I've asked you to write these down, you can now come up with as many examples as you want. In fact, I'm gonna ask you to do that. And you can let me know in the comments section what combinations really spoke to you. You can use any scale you want, play them at any tempo, use any combination of those two four note groupings and come up with your own lines. And let me know uh, all of those variables and what worked for you. Let me know the tempo that you worked with, let me know the scale that you worked with, and let me know the two note groupings that you used to create your line. Because maybe if we see a bunch of those in the comment section, then we can all just try them out and hear what they sound like. Um, or you can just go through and just try to play as many of them as you can. This is a super exercise to help you with uh, having an understanding of the groove, also improvising around certain rhythmic patterns that you have already established, and really solidifying your role as a bass player where you are holding down a specific rhythmic pattern but then kind of embellishing in ways that are simple but still keep the essence of the original rhythmic phrase. My friends, 
I think I'm going to leave it there. Nice and simple like. Uh, if you like this video, do me a huge favor, click like. And um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Click that notification bell to let you know when new videos are coming out. I will not leave you hanging for so long between this and the next video. I can promise you that. Um, you can also donate to the channel in one of two ways. You can um, donate any uh, amount that you see fit using the link in the uh, description box below. And you can join the channel for $5 a month, which uh, all of the above really helps me out in a huge way. Uh, so thank you for watching, my friends. The channel is still growing, and I really appreciate you all being here. And I appreciate your patience in waiting for this part two of our rhythmic groove lesson. <laughs> my name is Rich Brown, y'all. Peace and love. I'll see you in the next video.